Hey guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video. Today is going to be different. Um, as you can see, eye bags, dark circles, full view. So for the entirety of this video and possibly for the next two uh, wrap up videos that I do because I'm in the process of filming my uh, best books, worst books and books I DNF'd in 2021 uh, videos, so catch me wearing these to protect you guys. Yes, they are huge for my face. However, the less you can see my face, the better, right? Instead of doing all of the books that I thought were freaking amazing this year, uh, because then that would have been like 25 books, which to be honest with y'all, I don't have the time nor the energy to do that, okay? Uh, some of y'all are trying to see the better person in me, I'm not. I've accepted the person I am and that person is lazy. My friend was like, okay, well then how about you just do the best books, the best book that you read for each month of the year. And I was like, game aware, what a woman. For this video, I have like 12 books, I think. Um, at least 12 because I think it was like August that I couldn't decide. So I like doubled up. Um, either way, I have at least 12 books on here and I may or may not keep the sunglasses on you never know. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Look at this, the sunglasses are already coming off. Cause we have Bunny, all right, by Mona Awad for January. I gave this bitch five stars. Bunny is about this girl named Samantha who goes to like this really Ivy League-esque college. And she is basically a lonesome girl. She doesn't have very many friends. I think she only has one. And uh, she is in this writing class with these four very clicky hive mind-ish girls who are very childish acting. They're atta they're attached to the hip. They call each other a bunny. And um, they invite her at one point to their smut salon. I wish. And the smut salon turns out to be uh, a place where the bunnies make their darkest fantasies come to life. I loved Bunny, all right? First of all, the writing was pretentious. And I normally don't like that, but it was pretentious in a way that it was like, bitch, I'm better than you. I loved just the hive mindedness of the bunnies themselves because I'm sorry, anything involving like cultish, like hive mind, like cult dynamic, like friend group clicky, I love it. I love it so much. I love seeing people thrive or just like have to survive and that dynamic i think it is so fascinating and the way that samantha is ensconced in the bunnies and like like the process of her getting um involved with this group is so interesting because we literally see her going uh from using first person to the we to the us it is oh it was so good it was just so good and the twist at the end had my jaw on the floor bunny five stars wholeheartedly recommend it that is now one of my favorite books of all time february's winner is the henna artist by alka joshi this one is about this girl named lakshmi who runs away from her husband to the city of jaipur where she becomes a henna artist to all these really high profile women in becoming this henna artist she uh learns all these secrets about them and like has to juggle all of this intrigue with you know not saying the wrong thing and having a reputation just <laughs> thrown out the window and i gave this one five stars too i uh was able to interact with the author alka joshi herself um que mujer again what a woman i just loved this book so much first of all the cover is gorgeous i don't know how anybody could look at this cover and not be enthralled lakshmi is just a cunning bitch and we love her for it all right i love cunning women cunning women can eat off my dinner table every damn day of the week and i will continuously cook for them yes i do the cooking yes i do the cleaning just the amount of intrigue in this book all right i love watching people holding all of these secrets holding basically people's livelihoods here in the palms of their hands and them having to navigate basically the society in which the in which they live uh without losing everything 
and this has everything. If you like, um, I would say historical fiction, honestly, um, I would read this, not to mention just, I don't know, if you are like me and you like cunning women, you might wanna read this too, okay? Get on it. Speaking of cunning women, y'all, all right, we have March's Contender, which is Foul as Fucking Fair by Hannah Kappen. This is about uh, Jade Kanjara and her friends, and they are the it girls. Everybody wants to be them or be with them. Who are you? Who are we? We are that bitch. It is Jade's 16th birthday, and they go out to the St. Andrew's prep party, which is like this really preppy school, and uh, Jade gets sexually assaulted uh, by multiple boys there. And so Foul is Fair is all about Jade and her friends going after each and every single one of these boys and getting these boys getting what they deserve. I gave this bitch five stars. First of all, this is a Macbeth retelling. All right, and Macbeth is about the only Shakespeare play I'll give an ounce of my time to. Also, her and her friends are just cunning. I need to take my glasses off for this one, all right? Because the anger that radiates from this book is so addicting to read, all right? You want these girls to get what they need to move on. You want these boys to get exactly what the hell they got coming to them. I just love this. I love the fact that it's Macbeth. I love the fact that it's cunning women banding together to take back what the hell was taken from them in the first place. And I don't know, I don't care if it's realistic. I love it. And I think that if anybody who liked anything I just talked about, I think you'll like it too. April's contender is The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam Jeanoff. I gave The Lost Girls of Paris four stars. This is a book that is based off of like uh, a bunch of true stories from World War II. During World War II, Great Britain had this organization that was specifically dedicated to espionage, sabotage, um, on the ground in France. So it's all about these female agents going into France to uh, basically like deliver ciphers and codes and everything like that to help the um, allied powers against the Germans and the Nazis. And it was so good. We're following two timelines. We're following one of the women who gets deployed into France. And then we're following another woman who finds a briefcase of all of the photographs of these women who went into Paris but never came back. And uh, I think, first of all, it was just so good. I loved it. I mean, I'm a big historical fiction buff, so I guess if you don't like historical fiction, you probably won't like it. I, I think the real kicker for this is that it's just based off of real true stories. And the fact that some of these women never came home and never were found, like their bodies were never found. That's the real tragic point about this that I really clung on to and I cried after I finished this, all right? I'm not gonna lie. Um, I shed a big fat tear after I read this, okay? So I think if you like, again, intrigue, like I said, with the um, an artist, I think you'll really like this along just, along with, you know, the historical fiction aspect of it. Okay, May. <laughs> God's Behaving Badly by Marie Phillips. The 12 main Greek gods are all living in one flat and they are miserable. Let's just say the only time they ever find any solace or enjoyment is when they're picking on us or themselves. In their boredom, Apollo and Aphrodite uh, indulge in a giant battle of wills that ends up turning into the end of the world, which uh, Artemis has to uh, ask for the help of these two mortals, Alice and Neil, who basically just get wrapped up in everything. And uh, I gave this five stars. I love this. I think if you are a Percy Jackson fan or just a Greek mythology fan in general, you'll really like this. But I think the main reason of why I clung onto this book so tightly is because of just how big the disconnect between what the gods deem as romance and sex and what the mortals deem as rape. I think the disconnect that was shown was so big and I love it. I love it so much that it was shown because I mean, you look throughout Greek mythology and the idea of romance is very, very iffy, okay? There's like some scenes in there that's just like, why? But it's also hilarious. Okay, it is blunt, it is dry humor. I think you're a fan, I think if you're a fan of dry humor, you'll really like this book. Um, and not to mention, it just explores so many aspects of um, uh, Greek mythology. And also, 
it's an Orpheus and Eurydice retelling, which is probably my favorite Greek myth. All right, how can I not love it? June's Contender is A Curse of Roses by Diana Pinkicha. This is about a princess named Isabel who has this curse where she, any food that she touches turns into flowers. So homegirl is basically starving. Her people are starving. There's like this famine going on and she enlists the help of this witch um, or an enchanta mora in order to reverse the spell to where instead of Isabel uh, touching food into flowers, she can now touch flowers into food and save herself and save her people. Um, and maybe she finds love along the way. Okay, I gave this five stars. This is just a historical fantasy, which is always nice to read every once in a while. And it's sapphic. Okay, it's character driven. All right, so it might be a little slow. However, um, I thought it was good for what it was. Um, and the writing is just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, the writing in here is about as flowery as the flowers that Isabel spits out of her mouth. All right, damn, it is gorgeous. July's is The Ravens by Danielle Page and Cass Morgan. This is about a coven of witches that is disguising itself as a sorority. And we're following two main characters, uh, Scarlet and Vivian, I think. Uh, Scarlet is a legacy. <laughs> and uh, she is vying for the presidential spot of the of of her coven and then vivian is a girl who doesn't even know she's a witch but she wants to like be a part of the sorority and then she finds out that she is a witch and it's all about this coven of witches who are trying to figure out what this energy is that's coming at them that has a very vengeful air about it all right so it's got witches it's got sisterhood it's got bitchcraft it's got everything all right i gave this girl five stars i loved it i loved the writing i loved the sisterhood i loved the witchcraft all right it's got the lore it's got a twist which was about as good as bunny all right um i need the sequel like right now monarchs i need it in my hand august this is the one where i had to double up uh we have um, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. First, I gave this dude four stars. Um, this is about, I really don't even know how to describe this book other than, you ever seen Human Centipede? Um, if you haven't, dear God, don't watch it. If you have, then you know the guttural reaction, the visceral feeling that you have when you think of Human Centipede. Okay, um, that's the feeling and the reaction that I had when I read this, all right? Um, it was good, don't get me wrong, it was very good, but it was just very disturbing. It was like, what the hell type of therapy dog do you need because it's showing? The best that I can do to describe this book is that um, it is about these five people who like, are the last of humanity and they're being kept alive by this computer that is sadistic and just has fun torturing them and it's very quick it's definitely one of the most disturbing books that i've ever read like i said i don't even know how to describe the feeling that i feel whenever i think about this book to you guys other than if you want a book that is going to make you stare point blank at a wall when you're done with it go for it and then the second book that I have for August is uh, Depression and Other Magic Tricks by Sabrina Benaim. I also gave this four stars. This is a book of poetry. I felt so many stories in this book um, in the marrow of my bones. All right, I think if you are somebody who is diagnosed with depression or goes through depressive episodes or is just down really badly at one point, um, I would definitely pick this up because it, it, it made me feel seen on a lot of hidden insecurities that I do have um, regarding mental health and emotions. And I think, you know, if I feel it at one point, I'm sure tons of other people do too. September. <laughs> okay, September, bitches. September is The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. I gave this girl five stars. All right, yes, the smut. Yes, it's literally just sex, um, but I don't care. 
basically this is about um princess hala and uh her kingdom is conquered by this race of people and uh she saves the conquering race's prince uh from her people who basically want to kill him in revenge for his people taking over their kingdom and she's like no he's a kid let's not be horrible people she basically saves his life and uh she's exiled taken to a monastery and uh basically lives there for however many years and a uh, homeboy prince just grows up and the entire time he's in love with her right he is down bad he worships the ground the pebbles the gravel the sand grains that she walks on and um he basically comes up to her and he's like hey my ministers are telling me to kill you but i don't want to kill you i want to marry you so let's get this cracking and uh so it's all about him and her trying to go through this relationship and uh the ceremony that his people have where the um man has to prove that he can pleasure the woman before they can marry it may be blatantly written by a woman but do i care no this was another humor me book a breath of fresh air if you might this next one october this one was a book that i read for the uh trick-or-treat-a-thon uh if you want to see my vlog i'll put it up here somewhere but october's contender is the child thief by uh gerald brom this is a, a Peter Pan retelling, an incredibly dark, grotesque, barbaric, brutal Peter Pan retelling. It's basically about this kid named Nick who meets Peter Pan and is taken back to not Neverland necessarily, but uh, this utopia where um, all of the kids that Peter has taken uh, have to fight these creatures threatening the world that peter lives in look i feel like i just have to give uh credit to the first and second runners up of this month all right first runner up was sharp teeth by toby barlow second runner up was empire of wild by sherry dimeline now that we have that out of the way child thief i gave it five stars there are still things about this book that haunt me to this day that genuinely just just rifle through my mind and like leave it destroyed i think the biggest kicker about this book no matter take away all of the horrific stuff that happens in this book i think the real kicker about it is that they're children these are kids that are fighting violently for their life i just cannot recommend this book enough all right but like i said it is graphic it is brutal it is barbaric all right look up everything you have to look up before you read this book okay november's book all right let me just put my sunglasses back on all right because this girl shines brighter than pretty much every single book i've talked about on here all right and that is iron widow by shiran j Zhao. i have talked i have ranted about this book so many times on this channel and i will continue to do it all right uh, this is Chinese Pacific Rim, and I cannot be happier about it. Um, this is about a girl named Wu Zetian who lives in this uh, futuristic world where humanity is battling giant aliens with giant robots. And this these robots are piloted by this system that uses the chi of a female pilot and a male pilot. But because female pilots are seen as weaker and the pilot system is rigged against these women uh their chi is lost in these fights and therefore the female pilots mostly always die and so um our main character our girl Wu Zetian she is um the younger sister of a girl who was enlisted into the military to become a concubine for one of these male pilots and uh Zetian wants to be enlisted into the military like her sister to become a concubine for the same dude because she thinks that he killed her sister so she is going to cut his throat and laugh about it which she does 
okay, in the most iconic way possible. All right, homegirl knows how to make an entrance and we love her for it. All right, I gave Iron Widow five stars. I'd give it six, I'd give it seven, maybe eight, maybe nine, maybe 19 if possible. All right, I need the sequel to be just as good or else I may just go into hibernation. The thruple in here gave me everything. All right, you don't see thruples anywhere. Zetian, she is one of the only female protagonists in general, not even only in YA, but in general, that genuinely is angry. I cannot be happier with how Zetian just lets her anger be what it is. And I, oh. so much ah! i need to take my glasses off for this one too shit okay um december's pick tender is the flesh by um agustina bastarica this book is about a uh, futuristic world in which uh overpopulation is at its peak and um all of the animals have been struck with this virus that makes consuming animal meat lethal to humans. So um, cannibalism then is legalized. So it's all about uh, Marcos uh, living his life um, as a manager, I want to say, or like this worker in one of the processing plants. And uh, you see basically just how much humanity has stepped behind in the legalization of cannibalism. Um, and he's, Marcos is given a chance to test his humanity when he is given a gift by one of his superiors and that gift is a human woman. However, uh, in this book they do not call the humans that they eat humans because why would they? That just gives the meat more humanity. Um, they call the humans that they eat heads, as in, you know, heads of cattle. This book had me at my wits end all right i gave this book five stars i cannot tell y'all just how disturbing this book is if you're gonna read it i would recommend the audiobook especially the one off of scribd um the ending for this book i could not form a single coherent sentence for five minutes straight all right this book had me covering my mouth, grasping at my roots, all right? I, this book probably gave me five extra gray hairs. This book will knock you on your ass and have you feeling feelings that you didn't even know you could feel. Mm -hmm. So you guys, that was my best books of each month of 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this wasn't too, you know, over the top. I'm just... I'm a little delirious, all right? I uh, haven't had that much sleep. But, um, you know, I just thought this was a cool new way of doing this j just for this year. I don't know, maybe I'll do it next year. You never know. But um, I will have my Goodreads linked down below in case y'all want to read the reviews that I put for each of these books. And I hope that in 2022, we can read even better books. So... With that being said, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.